Okay. Now, Chris, you can still hear me. You can see the screen? I, I can, and I can, yes. Okay, all right, great. So I'm gonna give it another minute, just a couple of, uh, I suppose, housekeeping items. If you've got any questions, we, we'll make a little bit of an allowance at the end of uh, the conversation. For questions, please use the control panel on the side. You'll see there is all sorts of functionality to do with chat. You can also raise your hand if you want your mic to be unmuted, which I think will, if we've got time, at the end of the session. Um, uh, but if you've got any questions or anything about what Chris is saying today, please use the chat function. I will manage that. And at the end of it, if there's some time left, we will kick on with uh, some questions. Um, I suppose we are live now, Chris. I think it's recording. It is. Uh, so welcome, everybody, to our second webinar in the series of um, our series about hiring webinar series. Uh, just some... Um, talking points today, a uh, quick welcome. We uh, have got a very exciting new partnership announcement with the chaps from End Border. Then Chris is going to show us some, some really cool stuff uh, with regard to the onboarding experience. And like I said, if we've got some time, some Q&A at, at the end. So um, just on the webinar series, uh, why are we doing this? Uh, please feel free, guys. Uh, every week, last week, we had a conversation with Simon. We got a really uh, we've got some nice activity this week. We've got a, a few more registrations. So if you guys want to talk about this online, please feel free to do so. And just why we're doing this, again, uh, we want to give people access to experts and leaders in the talent acquisition space, folks that you might not have access to in South Africa. Um, we also want to give folks exposure to new tools, technology, stuff that really moves the needle. Um, and then also give you a, a detailed how to implement uh, certain processes or tools or, or procedures that might um, help you with your talent acquisition journey. And then, of course, hopefully, as we grow this webinar series and as we get more people registering, um, sharing best practice, we'd love to take this uh, offline and set up some uh, meetups in Joburg and Cape Town and Durban and everywhere else in South Africa. So that is the ultimate goal. And while we're doing this, um, and just on our speaker today, before I, I let Chris loose uh, and uh, have him present a little bit about Chris. Chris, now remember, this is all researched online, so it might be wrong. But uh, after a little bit about Chris, after graduating from Aston University in Birmingham in 1998 with a BSc degree, uh, for his sins, uh, Chris started at the Evening Standard, which is a newspaper, I believe, doing telesales for recruitment advertising. He then moved on to AMRA, uh, it looks like the largest media sales house in the UK with 52% market share of the regional press for five years, eventually ending up team lead for recruitment advertising sales. After a few more gigs in the advertising space, Chris landed at LinkedIn as the EMEA program lead and eventually became senior manager for business development uh, talent solutions. Chris joined N Border in March of 2018 as the head of business development, a job title that might be a little misleading. As in all my dealings with Chris, I've never heard one pitch or hard sell from the man. Uh, dealing with Chris is almost like dealing with an N Border workflow itself. I touch, heavy on the user experience and extremely helpful. Chris, welcome to the webinar. I hope I got most of that right. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome. Now, Chris, before before you go, just a quick partnership announcement. Um, Hashtag Talent is now officially a referral partner for N Border, uh, bringing experience-driven onboarding to the South African market. So if you guys like the stuff that is going to be discussed today, please get in touch. Uh, we'll be your eyes and ears here before we, we pass you on to the folks at, at N Border. So uh, just wanted to share with folks how this partnership began. Um, I suppose I believe that there's two processes or focus areas that companies can focus on to improve and build their brand uh, in the TA or talent acquisition space. I think two processes that move the needle more than, I suppose, good sourcing or maybe a flashy career site um, or a LinkedIn investment, which is all nice things. But two things, when done well, it does more for your employer brand than anything else by some margin. And they are one great offer process and maybe a topic for another webinar. 
Uh, but if you in invest in a process that's run by uh, recruiters or talent acquisition professionals that understand money, that understand benefits, and they understand the candidate environment, your brand value will go up even if they reject your offer. And the second, which we're going to be talking about today, is a phenomenal onboarding experience. And I'm not talking about the day that a new employee starts with your company and induction takes place. I'm talking about the 30 days or the 60 days from when the candidate hands in their resignation, uh, when they doubt whether they made the right choice. Will the new team like them? Will they get the tools they like? Will their boss like them? Is the company they're joining financially secure? All these questions and employee fears you can turn into a positive experience with, and to borrow from Enboarder, an experience-driven onboarding process. Um, I truly believe that that this that the onboarding process is what builds employer brand and it's what people will say online and talk to their friends about and actually build your brand. So hence, we are exceptionally excited to partner with the guys from Enboarder, but I think I've said enough, Chris, I'm going to make you the presenter. And okay. if you have anything else to add to that, you can, and I am just swapping you over so we should be able to see your screen. There we go. Great. Can you see my screen okay? It is perfect. So, perfect. Well, look, I, I don't think I've got a great deal to add to that. I think you've, uh, you've, you've done my job for me this morning. So. <laughs> I'm going to struggle, struggle to follow that, but, um, but thank you. Thanks for the introduction. And um, yeah, really, really uh, nice way to introduce us. So thanks very much. Um, so just to reiterate, my name's Chris, uh, and I work for a technology company called Enborder. Um, we've been uh, we've been around for about four years, and we were really born out of the idea that um, current approaches to onboarding are are broken and are not effective, and that that's having a knock on effect to the performance of businesses. Um, so instead, we wanted to approach the space differently and very much look at onboarding um, through an employee engagement and experience lens and. Um, create a technology solution that's unlike anything else that's out there in the market today. Um, in terms of what I'm going to run through, uh, I've got quite a lot of content, so I'm going to get through it as quickly as I can um, because I also want to be able to jump to um, our system and try to do a, a quick live demo um, of the front end experience for you. Um, but I'm going to start by talking about why we believe we need to move beyond the traditional approaches to onboarding. I'm then going to um, introduce a concept, um, a, a kind of a phrase that we've coined, which is experience-driven onboarding. Um, let you know what we mean by that, but also kind of what are the uh, intended benefits of taking that approach. We'll then have a little look at Enboarder. I'm going to do a brief introduction to the technology, and as I said, then I'm going to try and jump out and actually show you that live. Um, and then finally, there's a couple of things that I want to look at um, just from an impact perspective. So a piece of research and also a customer case study. And we'll then open up for questions. So to begin with, why um, why onboarding is broken? Now, obviously that's quite a, a lofty statement. So I wanna take a little bit of time to explain that. Um, traditionally, onboarding has been seen as a necessary process. Um, and is very much viewed with the needs of the business at the center, uh, the compliance obligations, the paperwork, the standard process that people have to go through. Um, obviously, all of those are very important, but by focusing solely on those needs, the needs of the business, um, most or many onboarding programs disregard the needs of the new hire. Um, and that, that's a danger, especially at a time um, of kind of what is quite an important transition for those employees. Um, I don't expect you to take my word for it, so I'm going to pepper through some research wherever possible. Um, so a, a couple of quotes here from a, a piece of research that was conducted a couple of years ago. Um, only 27% of new hires received a call from their manager before they started work. And only 20% of companies introduce the team or communicate goals before day one. So really backing up that idea that before day one, um, the focus is all around the company and not necessarily the needs of that new hire. Um, now, I want to try and take a look at that from a, an engagement timeline perspective. So what we have here is a timeline of engagement across the employee life cycle. So what you tend to find is that during the recruitment process, engagement is increasing. 
you have a recruiter that's selling an opportunity to a candidate, a candidate that's selling themselves to a recruiter. So the point at which an offer is made is a real peak of engagement between the two parties. Unfortunately, what you often see then is a drop off of engagement, a steep drop off um, between offer accept and day one. Oftentimes the new hire won't hear anything what they do here is very impersonal and often pushed to them from a system rather than being a human touch point and is very much task driven. What does the company need from me rather than what do I need from the company? And then worst case scenario, you start on day one. Consequently, the organization is not ready for you. The manager isn't ready for you and you're treated like a commodity. And that then really sets the tone for your ongoing engagement with your new employer. Thinking about the impact that that has, you know, is this really important? And I think, yes, it is, because ultimately first impressions matter. If you don't make that first impression great, that's going to have a knock on effect to the, the new hire, to their sentiment towards you as their employer. And ultimately, that results in attrition of staff. Um, again, kind of looking at some research that was conducted, in this case, a Burson by Deloitte study that showed that 4% of new hires will leave a job after a disastrous first day. 22% of staff turnovers occur in the first 45 days, and 90% of new hires decide to stay or leave in the first six months of employment. So that period that we call the attachment set, when you first started a new job, the impression that you make during that period is, is really vital and vital to um, vital to, to assuring that the people that you've hired create a connection with you and intend to stay with you for the long term. If you don't do that, there's obviously a cost to the business. And in this case, the cost to that business could be as much as three times that employee's salary if you lose that employee within their first year of employment. So it is a problem. It does lead to attrition and ultimately attrition costs the business. So thinking about things a different way um, and really looking at this from a, an experience point of view, what is experience driven onboarding? Well, as the phrase suggests, um, it's really about creating an engaging and memorable employee experience when welcoming that new hire. Um, it's about moving beyond that traditional paperwork and process approach and really emphasizing a greater level of interaction, human interaction during that time. Um, I've put together a kind of a, a few rules, the kind of the three key rules um, of, um, of engagement onboarding or experience uh, driven onboarding. Um, the first and foremost of which is that it's all about the employees. If you put the employee and their needs at the center of your um, onboarding activities, you can really help to understand their mindset, the pain points that they'll go through, um, and their expectations for when they join you. And in doing so, you can really help to define um, not only a comprehensive onboarding experience, but one that will be really energizing and, and will really create connection um, between the people, the company, and that new hire. The second is don't forget to pre-board. Um, I think that candidate and, ex and employee experience are uh, often talked about, but often seen as two different things. What we really intend to do here is to create a bridge between the two and create a seamless experience that begins the moment an offer is accepted, um, preparing that new hire for what can be a difficult period of transition, drip feeding them in information, introducing them to, to key people and really preparing them for their first day. And it doesn't stop there. Um, I think that third kind of rule, keep it coming. Um, onboarding doesn't end when all the boxes have been ticked. We need to take this opportunity to provide a consistent experience during that important first 12 months, scheduling regular catch-ups, check-ins, um, really kind of um, pulse checking how that experience is going for those new hires and using that insight to iterate and improve the process um, that we're putting them through. Now, I just want to go back to that timeline that I shared a couple of minutes ago um, and look at what the impact could then be of taking a more experience driven approach. So, again, you have that peak of, peak of engagement, sorry, 
when the offer has been accepted. And by taking a more experience-driven approach, we then expect that engagement to increase. They've accepted a role. They want at least that engagement to maintain. We feel that we can increase on it and build on it. And in doing so, reinforce that decision that the new hire has made. Create a personal connection between them, their manager, their new team, the business, and really remove any anxiety they might feel before day one. In doing so, they're ready to join the business on day one. They know where they're coming. They don't have those first day nerves. Um, and that then, um, just as a, a negative experience will have an impact, a positive in, uh, experience will have an impact in terms of their future sentiment towards their new employer. So just thinking about some of the, the benefits then that, that you can really um, kind of experience if you follow this approach. Um, I think by looking at the process and by automating as much of the process and, and in particular, the kind of the common tasks across the process, we're able to free up everybody for a more meaningful face-to-face -face, um, interactions. And that, that's then a better experience for everybody involved, not just the new hire, but also the manager, anybody um, that is involved, in the, the peers and the teammates of those new hires. By allowing the new hire to tell us about themselves, we can help to create familiarity, but we can also help to understand their strengths and help to help them bring those strengths to their new role and make them successful in their new role. We can speed up integration, creating connectivity between the new hire, the manager and the team. Ultimately, everybody wants to fit in and the fitter they, uh, the quicker they fit in, the quicker they settle, and the quicker they become um, more productive. So they become aligned with the business, they become engaged with their team, and they become a productive member of the team more quickly. And then finally, um, is the knock-on effect to your employer brand. So by delivering an experience that delights new hires, um, you'll ultimately create employee advocacy. And that in turn will build your reputation as an employer and fill your talent pipeline with better more engaged talent. So it becomes a virtuous circle of continuous improvement. More happy employees, better employer brand, a better quality of candidates filling your pipeline. Now hopefully that gives you a, a taste of kind of why we are approaching the space slightly differently um, and why we think it's important to take a more experience-led approach um, to onboarding. Um, now I want to tell you a little bit about Emboarder itself. Um, and as I said, we'll jump out. Um, WP, you need to keep me honest with time. Um, I need to save about five minutes to run through the research and the case study. Um, but I'm going to jump out and look at um, Emboarder itself. So first of all, a quick introduction to the product. So, Emboarder is a workflow product that guides new hires and their managers through the onboarding process. So we have three key groups um, that use Emboarder. The manager or internal stakeholder, the employees, um, and the workflow editor, who is the only person that would access the back-end system of Emboarder. Um, there's a couple of pieces within that top statement there that I, I want to jump into. The first is um, the guide, that word guide. And I think this is really important. So everything that Emboarder does for managers and for employees is pushed to them. We send them notifications, which then link to, to content that's hosted online for them to action or um, consume. The important piece there is we're not expecting them to remember to do anything. We're not expecting them to remember to visit a portal or to remember to visit an app. We're constantly prompting them to take those actions and guiding and coaching them during that process. The second really important and differentiating piece here is and their managers. So not only are we thinking about the employee, we're also thinking about how do we help the manager to play an engaged and proactive role in that process. Typically, people managers are very time poor, but their role in the onboarding process is really important. They are the front line of the business to that new employee. So how can we help them play a greater role and increase the degree of engagement? 
And the third piece, obviously, is experience. I think I've said enough about why I think experience is important. So just jumping into each of these um, stakeholder groups individually. Um, so we essentially um, coach and guide the managers through the process and in doing so increase their level of engagement. As I said, all of our communications start with a notification. Typically that's SMS or email, but both managers and new hires can choose a preferred method of notification. Um, so SMS, email, Slack, uh, work chat in workplace, WhatsApp, whatever the preferred method of communication is, they can set that up and that's how we will push content to them. It's mobile first, so it looks great on any device as long as that device has a web browser, but equally at home on desktop. There's no apps to download, and there's no portals to have to set up credentials for. So we believe in doing that, we make it really frictionless for managers um, and stop all of those kind of things that, that create barriers to them getting engaged in the process. But if they don't get engaged, we can set up the system to handle reminders and escalations. If an action isn't completed by a manager, send them a reminder in 24 hours. If it still isn't completed, send a reminder to an escalation point 24 hours later. So always thinking about how can we automate these steps within the process to make um, the workflow flow better. Similar from a new hire perspective, um, so content delivered, uh, notification sent by their preferred means, and then attached to uh, online hosted content. Very, very simple and intuitive to use. So there's no stress for those new hires. They're not having to learn how to use a new system. Um, no training required. The primary focus of the application, as I said, is, is really to deliver a great experience for them, with that secondary focus being the um, task management and more compliance driven aspects of onboarding. And then there's uh, the admin interface itself. And again, the only people that we would expect to access this interface are the people that are managing the system. Typically somebody within HR who is building those, um, those onboarding workflows. And then once built, it's simply a case of going back into the system a couple of times a week to check that they're delivering correctly um, and to address any alerts that have been set, um, perhaps because people aren't engaging or because um, notifications aren't being received. Um, it's all drag and drop functionality, so it's very, very easy to learn. Um, and we even say fun to use, and I think fun to use because you can really see kind of tangible results for the effort that you're putting in as you build those workflows. Now, at that point, I just wanna jump out of the deck um, and actually into Emboarder itself. Now I'm hoping you can still hear me, uh, hear me yep. and see me, I should say. Everything is, is, is cool, looking good. Looking good, perfect, thank you. Um, so this is Emboarder itself, the admin portal for Emboarder. I'm not gonna spend long in here. For those that would like to have a full demonstration, um, we'd be happy to organize that. Um, at a later date, but essentially this is where you would manage your onboarding workflows. Here you can see in this main screen my live workflow, so I've got a workflow here for hashtag talent, which I'm gonna trigger in a second, and a default workflow, and the system comes with a default workflow, so it's very easy for you to um, immediately set, set the system up, and then iterate on that workflow as you define your experience. All drag and drop functionality, so if I wanted to set up a new workflow, I could just drag and drop it in here, Similarly, with the workflow timeline, um, it's built with sequences and modules. Sequences are the timings of communications. Modules are these individual lines, which are the pages of content within each sequence. And again, all drag and drop. So adding a new sequence would be a case of just dragging and dropping it onto my timeline. As I said, I'm not gonna show you that in detail. Um, instead, what I wanna do is um, quickly trigger a new sequence. So I'm gonna pop my name in here and my mobile number. And I'm gonna select a start date of tomorrow and a brand of hashtag talent. I'm gonna hit next and then I'll put in manager name and again my number so it all comes to my phone and hit add to workflow. 
So I've added myself to that workflow and I should almost immediately receive uh, a notification by way of SMS. Um, this is when I have to cross my fingers a little bit. It does normally work and my phone's just buzzed. Um, so let me just minimize here and you should see my phone screen. A now, of live demo, right? <laughs> sure, it's always a risk, but uh, it's worth the risk. So you can see I've just received this new text message. I'll just open that text message up. And you can see here that this message is telling me that I've got some important information from hashtag talent and asking me to click the below link, which I'll click. And this is then taking me through to the content that we've set up within the system. So you can see all branded nicely. Um, here, just a, a page of content that we've built within the system by dropping in an image and a video, just introducing me to the process that I'll be going through and the means with which I'll be receiving these communications. We've got a video in there, which is Simon from the last webinar. And as I said, all fully branded. So we've got the hashtag talent branding at the bottom as well. Now this second page is um, what we call our embed module. So you can create content within the system, but equally you can embed content that you already have existing elsewhere. In this case, this is a page that we've built on Adobe Spark, and you can see nice scrolling content where we put in some dummy content around um, employee benefits. Hitting next, this takes me through to one of our forms, and this really speaks to kind of how do we treat um, how do we treat new hires as individuals and try and find out a bit more information about them? This is built using our form builder. Um, it's just an example of the content that you could put in a form. You would be absolutely free to create forms for whatever purpose you require. And I'll show you another one in a second within the manager workflow. But you can start asking questions in here, like for example, how excited are you to start? And if that person said they were nervous, we could put logic in the background to say, um, Chris has indicated that he's nervous about his first day in the new role. Um, please, um, and then send a notification based on that response to the manager to say, please reach out to Chris. Um, and here's some helpful hints for managing his first day nerves. So the system can be very intuitive and deliver content according to the responses or the actions of the people going through the process. And then finally, an upload file button here. This could be used to upload a nice photo to share with the new team. Alternatively, it could be a photo for security credentials, um, anything or any other file that you need to um, get from that new hire and keep on record. Now, it's going to submit that form. And because I've finished that first sequence, what I've done in the back end with this, um, with this particular workflow is set it up so that only once that first sequence is completed will the first sequence for the manager be triggered. And again, that might be because we want to gather information within that first sequence that will then be delivered to the manager within their first sequence. So this is the first notification I would receive as a manager. Again, it's clicked through to that online hosted content. And the first thing that we start with is a bit of coaching. So again, this is thinking about how do we increase the degree of engagement from the manager. And part of that is really managing their expectations, letting them know what we expect from them, but reassuring them that we'll make it very easy for them in the process. And that in doing so, they'll have a strong impact on the experience of their new hire. Just gonna click next. This is then uh, taking us through to our, what we call our communications module. So this is where we start to prompt connection between manager or internal stakeholder and new hire. In this instance, we're prompting the manager to put a call in to welcome that new hire. We pull through that phone number. So all the manager has to do is tap that number on their phone and make a quick call. If they haven't got time for that call, we've pre-written a text message, populated it with dynamic tags, which is pulling through the data that we input when we launch the workflow, so that all of these communications are personalized to a greater degree as possible. So simply by hitting send, a text message will be sent welcoming that new hire. So we're making it really, really easy for the manager to appear to be very proactive and very engaged, but requiring very, very little effort on their part. Um, we also have a, a scheduling tool. 
Um, in this instance, we're prompting the manager to set up a welcome lunch with that new hire, again, thinking about their experience. But equally, you could use this module um, for scheduling any time with that new hire, be it an end of week one check-in, um, be it any sort of training that's required during that process, or even a probation review meeting at the end of their probation period. And on hitting add to calendar, an invite will be sent to both the manager and the new hire to be added to the calendar. So we're always thinking, kind of how can we avoid these things falling through the cracks? And then finally, um, in this demo, uh, is another form, and in this case, a more formal use of forms. Um, and again, something that often falls through the cracks, but a technology request form. So helping the manager to complete um, what is a kind of very much kind of uh, task oriented part of onboarding but again we want to make it painless for them so we've set up a form where we're indicating what the standard requirements are for that hire in terms of hardware and software and on clicking submit that form will be submitted directly into IT and we can either do that by way of an email or dropping it into a ticketing system so making it very very easy for um, the manager to complete that step and making sure it doesn't fall through the cracks by sending it straight through to IT. So that gives you a little taste um, of the experience from a front end perspective for both the employee and the manager. Obviously, I briefly showed you the admin interface as well. Um, if anybody would like a full demo, we can easily do that and I'd actually build a workflow similar to the one I've just shown you. I'd build that live so you can see how quickly and easily we can do that. And then we would jump back into um, the admin interface to look at the report. So you can see the level of granular detail that we have on actions that are completed, content that is consumed, um, and engagement rates of either the manager or that new employee. Now, going back to the deck, excuse me while I just transition. Um, so, Having, bear with me one second. There we go. So having shown you the system itself, um, I think obviously a, a large part of the story is the impact that this can have um, for new hires um, and the results that you can see as a, as a result of adopting a new approach. And as I said, there's a couple of pieces that I wanna show you here. Um, the first is a piece of research that we leaned on heavily when we were designing the tool. And the second is a case study. Um, so first, the, the piece of research. Um, so this was a piece of research that we came across when we were developing the tool a few years ago. Um, and essentially, uh, a group of professors from London Business School, uh, Harvard Business School, and the University of Carolina were conducting a study um, into onboarding, and in particular, how authentic self-expression could positively affect the onboarding process, and how that, in turn, can have an impact on business results. As part of that study, uh, they ran an experiment, at a company called Wipro, um, which is a multinational IT consulting firm. Um, and among other things, they operate call centers for their, their clients, customers. Um, and they tested three different ways of onboarding people. So they took a thousand new hires and tested three different methods of onboarding. One that was focused around the individual identity, um, one that was focused around introducing the org organizational identity, and then a test group that went through the traditional approach that Wipro had adopted. And the results were astounding. Um, in particular, with regards to retention, the results showed that allowing the, uh, allowing the new hires to um, to present their authentic selves and allowing that socialization um, of individual identity led to over a 33% greater retention during the first six months. So a significant impact on their retention rates in what was uh, a problem area for them. Similarly, um, in terms of customer satisfaction, um, as compared to both the organizational identity and the test group, there is an increase in terms of uh, customer satisfaction rates. So uh, a real impact in terms of not only the individuals that you hire, but the performance of the business as a result. If you engage with new hires on that personal level, 
they're not just less likely to leave, but they will also perform better in their roles. Um, really, I think that's that's great demonstration of the fact that um, the way that you welcome somebody into the business, the way that you treat those new hires has that tangible impact on business metrics. Deliver a great experience to your employees and you'll see that reflected on the bottom line. Finally, thinking about this specifically from a, a, a customer that we've worked with, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the Eventbrite story. Um, just for context, for those of you that, that aren't aware, um, Eventbrite are a global ticketing and event technology platform. They have uh, more than 900 employees, or as they like to call them, Brightlings, um, in 11 countries globally. And as a fast growing technology company, they've worked really hard to create a workplace and a culture um, that attracts and helps them retain great talent. But again, like many fast growing companies, they've really struggled to scale um, that new hire experience across the business for a number of reasons. Primarily that their technology didn't provide a comprehensive way to, um, to manage that onboarding um, experience or a way to help their managers play a really proactive role. Consequently, it was time consuming and the time was spent um, on the bare essentials and really didn't leave any time for them to implement the experience that they, they were really kind of aspiring to deliver. Um, in their own words, and I think this is telling, but in their own words, onboarding fell by the wayside, which is often the case. So how did we work with them to address these problems? Um, well, first of all, we automated as much of the manual tasks as we could. We integrated with their ATS so that the moment that uh, a new hire was made, um, uh, an, an onboarder workflow would kick off. So you accept an offer, that candidate is marked as hired within the ATS, and immediately that then triggers that onboarding journey to start. So that really goes back to what I was saying about creating a seamless experience from candidate through to employee experience. Similarly, um, we integrated with their e-sign provider so that as much of the paperwork and um, formal process as possible was automatically delivered by the system, allowing them time to really focus on um, how they build out that experience. By starting onboarding immediately, um, after offer accept and extending it further into the employee life cycle, they were able to deliver more content, more relevant and engaging content for those new hires, constantly adding value as those hires progress through their journey as an employee. In this instance, that included things like videos from the CEO welcoming those new hires, quizzes, a bit of gamification to make the process more engaging, and check-ins to really kind of pulse check, how is this working? And again, we look there at adding logic to say, if a new hire indicates that this isn't working for them, please send a notification to the manager and ensure that that manager reaches out and finds out what we could do better. Finally, um, by using the, the manager side of the workflow um, and by introducing buddies, we were able to create more human touch points and make the process altogether more personal for everybody involved. Now results are obviously the most important thing and when working with customers, we always try and set key success metrics before launching the system, but also benchmarks against which we can manage the impact. Um, and in this case, there were a few things they were looking at. Um, engagement, creativity, um, and time. And in all of those cases, we we're able to record an increase for them. From a, a manager perspective, we increase that manager participation in, and engagement to a high of 73% from a very low base. From a creativity perspective, um, again, we we're able to free them up to build and deliver the sort of experience that they were aspiring to deliver. And a nice quote there from Adrienne um, with regards to that experience. Um, in fact, that's, that's a quote from a hire. Um, the best onboarding experience they've ever had. And again, we would look to include in that workflow means to measure the experience that they're going through um, by way of a net promoter score. And then finally, from a time perspective, have we 
um, have we improved that pain point that they were experiencing with the system being very labor intensive and freed them up to do more of what they desired to do? And again, in this case, a quote from Adrienne, I'm now able to implement things I would only have dreamed about before in border. All the ideas I had to improve onboarding for our managers and employees can be brought to life. And that really encapsulates what, what we've tried to do for our customers um, and what hopefully we will be able to do for some of you. Um, and that brings me to the end of my piece. And I think we'll now open for questions. Chris, thank you very much. That was that was amazing. I'm just, as you were talking, just making notes. And uh, I think as <clears throat> while we wait for, if anyone's got any questions, um, please use the chat function. I'm um, happy to cover anything you want. If you've got audio, we can unmute you. Just uh, let us know via the chat function. But I think for me, Chris, what you know always is the challenge when you know when we work with companies is, um, and it might be different for other folks, but it for me, it's the the hiring manager participation piece is is very, very important. Um, and I think most of our clients always struggle with how do we involve, how do we make um, make it priority with IT that onboarding is important? How do we make it important with facilities or security that you know needs to issue um, logging cards or you know access cards? Um, how do we get managers to participate? So uh, what I what I love about this is it's the the automation that uses a push functionality like you don't have to think and that's what I think in border is is so different is you know with an ATS or applicant tracking system or any other technology you have to invest heavily it's training it's retraining it's now we've got to write reports now we've got to customize the reports module now we've got to do this now we've got to do all these things but with and I think this is what modern technology should look like this implementation process is simple by you know, it's set it and forget it. And I think that's where the value lies with um, with the system. So um, maybe a question from my side, Chris, is when we're looking at integrations, do you guys work with any applicant tracking system? Do you work with uh, particular payroll systems? Or what does that integration kind of with the existing environment look like? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> we have a number of existing integrations with ATS providers. Um, and we also work with an integration partner. So those that we don't have an existing integration with, we can action very quickly. Um, they have already built a number of connectors um, with uh, a, a very kind of broad catalog, something like 200 um, HR software providers. So we're able to leverage those connections to build an integration very quickly. Um, some of those ATSs that we're currently um, integrated with and working with would be smart recruiters, um, talent link um, greenhouse lever and um, so quite a lot that are already there there are some that we struggle being completely transparent there are some that we struggle to integrate with workday is one of those because it doesn't have an API that we can build a connector on top of but we work with a number of customers who use workday and in those instances they either license the API and we build a, a connector specific to them or we look at a workaround um, and that workaround could be without wanting to be too technical um, we essentially automate a csv export um, so automate a report from workday of new hire details and automatically pull that into um, into m border so from a user perspective it's very seamless in that you still get the same impact of a candidate being marked as hired and that triggering a workflow from a technology perspective it's not as elegant as it could be, but that doesn't impact the delivery um, of the experience. Awesome. And uh, in terms of, um, I suppose, implementation or deployment time, Chris, what's usually, what's usually, how long does it take from uh, your first initial engagement with a client to being up and running? Yeah, um, so average six weeks. Um, but it can be as little as, I think our record is a couple of days. Um, and essentially the, the reason for that variation of time is because it very much depends on um, the customer and how defined the customer's process is. That said, what we promote with our customers is an agile approach. So what we say to our all customers is let's get um, a single workflow live as quickly as possible so that all of your new hires will immediately be receiving 
a consistent experience. And then let's duplicate that and start to try and make that specific to a type of hire by location, by function, uh, potentially by language. Um, and let's start building on that to start trying to deliver more bespoke experiences according to a specific criteria. So that agile approach really lends itself to continuous build and continuous improvement. Um, the fact that we've got that default workflow that we ship with the product, um, I think that helps customers get live very quickly. It could simply be a case of changing the imagery um, and changing some of the language um, and you could get live very quickly. But I think the important thing, the thing that our customer success team um, who support all customer implementations at no additional cost, um, the thing that they would really seek to get across is adopting that agile approach, so getting something live and then iterating and seeking continuous improvements. Wonderful. Um, no questions are coming through, so either everyone is uh, blown away by what you've just shown them or <laughs> um, one... Hopefully the former. <laughs> yes. Um, listen, Chris, I, I think um, they are about to uh, load shit me here in the office, so I think my power is about to get switched off. So, Chris, listen, thank gotcha. you very much for for taking the time to chat to us today. Um, very useful from my point of view. I always love seeing the system. I love talking to you guys, and, and just I'm excited to bring this product to the South African market. So, again, if anyone on this call uh, is interested, would like to see how this could work for you, or would just like to talk about onboarding and improving that process in general, uh, please get in touch, um, and and we will we will sort you out. Um, for next week, uh, we are continuing with technology, and we are going to talk to Rob Simmons, who's the regional vice president for Northern Europe at Smart Recruiters, and we're going to talk a little bit about innovation and your applicant tracking system, and the fact that it can be done. Um, using an ATS doesn't have to be painful, and uh, we will show you some cool stuff next week, what Rob and his team has uh, achieved with, with smart recruiters and um, what they do in terms of designing experiences around uh, the recruiter, uh, the hiring manager, and also the candidate. So, Chris, again, from my side, thank you very much. Really appreciate you being here, and um, I'm hoping to chat to you soon. For everyone on the call, You're welcome. Um, thanks for, for attending as usual. Um, the registrations for next week will go out. Also, I will edit this presentation and make it available. If you guys want to have a look at it, it will be on our website within the next two to three days. Chris, anything from your side before we let you go, where people can find you online? Yeah, um, find me on LinkedIn, obviously. And um, if anyone would like a demo of the system, please um, don't hesitate to get in touch with WP and he'll make the, the necessary arrangements. But just to say thank you all for for joining and I hope that was interesting and informative for you. Oh, super duper. Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Chat soon. No worries. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.